All right, so now let's work in the main game loop and start getting all of this to work together. So we've successfully completed the base, we've completed the pipe, we have the bird. Now it's just time to implement all of it. So first, I'm just going to change my draw window function a little bit. So now I'm going to add in an ability to draw pipes as well as the ability to draw the base. So what I'm going to do in here is just um, complete this already is I'm going to draw all the pipes and the base. So I'm going to say for pipe in pipes and pipes are is going to come in as a list because we could have more than one pipe on our screen at once. I'm simply going to say not that pipe dot draw and we'll pass it a window. So now for all of our pipes, we will draw them. Next thing I'm going to do is say base dot draw and give it a window. And that's as easy as it is to draw our stuff. And that's why I really like creating these draw methods because they just make it super clean and we can do all of the drawing from the object itself. All right. So next we need to now add and create, I guess, a base and some pipes. So let's start by, first of all, just changing our bird uh, position to be a little bit different. So I'm going to change it to actually be 230. 350 because that's where it should actually be located um, or at least like that's what I figured out is kind of the best position and what I'm also going to do is create a base now so I'm going to say base equals base and give this a height of 700 now this is because um, this is going to be at the very bottom of our screen and that's where 700 is because I believe the height is 800 um, let me actually just look here to make sure I'm just looking at my other file by the way because I want to make sure I don't mess any of this up uh, oh, my bad. Actually, we're not going to make it 700. We're going to make it 730. It's a little bit lower. Okay, so 730. That's where our base is. Um, now we're going to make sure that we pass pipes and base. And I guess I need to still program pipes. So now I'm going to say say pipes equals a list. And I'm just going to throw one pipe in here right now. And we'll start with it at a height of 700. Okay, so now that we have that, um, this is going to be weird, but we can actually just draw this and see what this looks like to start. Uh, so let's do control B here. Um, and you can see that we now have this base, which isn't moving, um, as well as this bird. So if we want to fix this and allow it to move, well, let's do that. So let's start by actually moving the base. So let's say base dot move like this. And now let's run this and see what happens. And now you can see we have this moving base and it makes it look like our bird is actually kind of flying um, through the screen, which I think is pretty interesting. And that was pretty easy to do. All right. So now let's move all of our pipes. And if we remember here, if I go to pipes, um, what do you call it here? Our pipe. Yes. So it needs to move backwards because we give it a starting expedition. My apologies. So anyways, let's now move all of our pipes. So to do this, I'm going to say for pipe in pipes because we might have more than one pipe in here. I'm going to say pipe dot move. All right. Now let's see if we get a pipe moving on our screen. All right. Give it a second. And there we go. We have some pipes. They have a random height and they have started moving. So now what we need to do is figure out once that pipe kind of leaves the screen, we need to generate another one and another one and another one. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to do that inside of this for loop that we just created. So what we essentially need to do is check the X position of our pipe. And once it reaches a certain point, we need to create another pipe and then another pipe and then another one and then another one and so on. So what I'm going to do here is first, we're actually going to check for collision with our pipes. So I'm going to say if bird um, or not bird, what am I saying? If pipe dot collide bird, then what we'll do is, well, we need to do something. So in this case, I'm actually just going to pass for right now because I don't want to do anything with the bird quite yet. But if we collide with the pipe, well, we need to, you know, end the game. We need to actually do something. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is check the position of the pipe. So I'm going to say if pipe, I'm going to go down here, if pipe dot X plus pipe dot pipe underscore, I guess we'll do top dot get underscore width is less than zero. Now, what this essentially is checking is if our pipe is completely off the screen. So by getting the X position of the pipe as well as the width of it, uh, if it's less than zero, that means it's completely off the screen. Then what we're going to do is we're going to remove that pipe. Now, we can't quite just remove it from this for loop because we're looping through the pipes. So what we need to do is create a list called rem, which is going to stand for remove. And we're going to add that pipe to the list to remove. So we're going to say rem dot append uh, pipe. And that's pretty straightforward. All right. Now what the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say if not pipe dot pass and pipe dot X less than bird dot X, we're going to say pipe dot past 
equals true and we're gonna say add underscore pipe equals true now what this is gonna do for us is it's gonna check if we have passed the pipe so let's go back into our drawing thing here and again I have now I regret having stopped drawing the thing so anyways let's say that you know this is our pipe like this and let's say that this is our bird well as soon as our bird passes by this pipe what we need to do is generate a new pipe for it to start you know going through or whatever so that's what we're checking there as soon as we pass the pipe generate a new one anyways let's do that now so we say add pipe and then we continue to move these pipes now what i'm going to do in here is get outside of this for loop and say if add underscore pipe then what we're going to do is say score plus equals one, which reminds me I need to create a score variable because once we pass a pipe, well, that means that we've gotten a point and we need to keep track of that for our game. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new pipe. We're going to add that to the screen. So to do that is pretty straightforward. We're going to say pipes dot append. And in this case, we're just going to do pipe and we're going to give it the same exposition of 700. Now, after we do this, we're going to remove those pipes that we had up here that we need to remove because they went off the screen. We're going to say for r in in rem, we're going to say pipes dot remove r, and that should just get rid of our pipes for us. All right. So now that we have that, we actually will see that our pipes will start generating properly on the screen. So let's run this uh, clicking the wrong key here. Uh, what is my variable local add pipe reference? Oh, my bad. We need to do add underscore pipe equals false to start up here because, you know, if this doesn't happen, we're not going to define it. So just make sure you add that at the top above remove. Let's run this. And now we should see that our pipes start generating. And as soon as we pass one pipe, another pipe will generate. Um, hmm, what is the error here? X not in not in list. Let me have a look at this and I'll be right back. Okay, so apparently I can't spell or read and I accidentally typed random. So that should be R. <laughs> Anyways, my apologies. Let's run this now and see if this works. All right, so there we go. That's a pipe and that's another pipe and there's another pipe. And if we want these pipes to spawn closer to each other, then what we can simply do is just change this positions rather than 700 to be 600. So if I do that, because I believe I actually changed the width of my screen to be 600, I think I did, um, then what will happen is these will spawn pretty much instantly once we pass. And there we go. We can see that that's what we get. Now, if these are too um, like too close to you, for you, then obviously you can make that a bit wider. Um, but I find that this is a decent distance. And right as you kind of pass one pipe, it's disappearing as you go through the other one. And it just it works well. It gives you enough time to kind of get in between them. So anyways, that is how that works. Now, we need to do a few other things here uh, about our bird. Now, the reason I haven't been moving our bird is because we're not going to be using the arrow keys to move it right now. What we're going to do is we're going to use an AI to move the bird and to actually play with it. So that's why I haven't bothered implementing the mechanics of, you know, moving it up and down and actually testing it in that way. So I guess the next thing we need to do is we need to check if the bird has hit the ground because once we start moving the bird if it hits the ground well we need to you know tell it it lost so for that what i'm going to do is just say if bird dot y is i guess uh, actually bird dot y plus bird dot image dot get underscore height if this is greater than the floor or the base where we did it which in this case is going to be 730 then we're going to say that we hit the floor so in this case, we need to do something. I'm just going to pass for right now, but we'll, you know, we'll modify that in a second. All right. So now that we've done that, we've actually pretty much coded the game of Flappy Bird. Now, I know it doesn't quite seem like it. Um, there's a few more things we need to add, like we'll draw the score up here, but it's almost about time to actually start adding the AI to this because before we can start kind of working with collision and moving the birds and all of this, uh, we need the AI to actually be operating the birds. So anyways, let's do one more thing here where inside of our draw function, which is here, we start drawing the score. So we'll add score in here and at the top of our program, we'll create some fonts just for drawing these scores. Um, so I'm just going to copy the ones that I have already. So I'm going to say, uh, for example, stat underscore font, and we'll just put this down one line is equal to pie game dot font dot S Y S font. I believe it's S Y S underscore font, not underscore, sorry, just font like that. Then what we're going to say is comic sans. And in here, we're going to put 50. 
Um, now we'll also do one more that's 70 for the score, I believe, or actually, no, I think 50 is fine for right now. Okay, so we'll just leave 50. And now what we're going to do is just render some font that tells us the score uh, when we're playing. So we actually can see that at the top. So to do that is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to do it here. I'm going to say text equals stat font dot render. And then in here, we're going to put our text that we want. So in this case, it's going to be score plus the string of score. And then what we're going to do is say one and we need to give it what's the last thing here. Um, anti-aliasing and I forget what the last thing is that we need to put inside when we draw this um, I believe it might be the color. I'll check in one second. Yes, so it is the color So let's make this white so 255 255 255 and then let's draw this on the screen So we're gonna say win dot blit text and then what we can do is do a little bit of fancy blitting here So we're gonna say win underscore width minus 10 minus text dot get underscore width so this way no matter how big our score gets it will actually show up on the screen and we'll keep moving it to the left to accommodate that now we'll draw it at 10 pixels and if i run this we should see the score font popping up oh font is not initialized which means we need to add one more line of code to the beginning of our program which is pygame dot font dot init uh it's kind of an annoying line to add but anyways put that up there and that should help fix this all right missing one required uh, positional argument score. So that means that now we gotta go down to our main loop and where we're calling draw window, we need to throw score in here. So let's run this and now we get score and let's see if it goes up when we pass the pipe and it does. Now, obviously nothing's happening with this collision, but that's what we're gonna get into now as we start um, adding a few more things and talking about actually implementing the AI.